There is no doubt in my mind that out of every updated topic to date, nothing needed more of a revisit than mushrooms, everyone. As we've got at least half a dozen new crafts to cover, brand spanking new regrowth mechanics, entirely new shrooms, and then some on the docket today. And that's not even counting the refresh basics. It's high time we return to the shrooms of the world, so let's get to it. And we'll start with the newest piece of information available to us, mushroom regrowth. For you see, digging up the spawns of shrooms for two shrooms each, no longer permanently destroy said spawn. Give the game anywhere between 5 to 20 days, and it will regrow the entire spawn nearby their original location. Not only that though, the timer for this fluctuates depending on the time of day and the mushroom spawns themselves. All types will regrow two times as quickly during their respective times of day, so in reality, we will never truly wait a fully days here. It's great stuff, but don't worry about their original growth mechanics being gone either, as they're not. Rain still absolutely regrows a picked up mushroom spawn in over half a day or so. However, it must be physically raining for this timer to progress at all, so make notes. To continue then, the basics of where exactly we'll be finding these things and when. Red mushrooms are found primarily in grasslands and forests and are pickable during the day. But head down to the red mushroom forest of the cave, however, and you'll be surrounded by the suckers alongside trees that drop them at any time too. And that's going to go for the majority of what's to come as well, like green mushrooms here. They too are in forests and grasslands, but are also in savannas and the occasional swamp as well, while peeking out during the dusk hours of the day. Plus, their mushroom forest may even come with a special guest or two in Bunnyman villages. And finally, at least for the OGs, blue shrooms love the cover of night and pretty much follow the exact same suit as the green guys, honestly, especially if a deciduous forest is in play. In fact, most swamp generations in Don't Starve Together no longer offer shroom spawns as much as they used to as it's these very deciduous forests that house a bunch of every type nowadays. They're essentially the one-stop shops, except they're not. As folks, moon shrooms exist too, so while you're down in your blue mushroom forest, be sure to pay a visit to the connected lunar grotto here and its lunar mushrooms. The former will drop one shroom for us, while mush gnomes here can give us two per kill. And finally, even the burrows of naked mole bats themselves offer one up 4.3% the time. It's not bad, but we ain't finished yet. Some final notes to take with all this in mind would be how our caves will also give us a combined mush tree forest that could very well satisfy all of our drug needs. How every mush tree type only drops one respective shroom no matter what, but do fall under regrowth themselves, so just chop them all down for all I care. Just be very mindful of these webbed blue mush trees, mind. And lastly, how your dead friends can truly hook you up with the good stuff. Ghosts have a 25 and 10% chance to fully transform both planted and picked mushrooms into an entirely new type respectively. So take advantage. As mushrooms themselves are kind of amazing, honestly. Even the lesser red ones here. Yeah, sure, their stats are terrible, and some people actually use them to weaken and or kill other mobs who eat them, but they are easily still one of the better veggie fillers in this entire game. And they do indeed have unique crafts, like ocean fishing lures at a tackle receptacle, or mad science potions. But green shrooms are where we start to see individual mushroom caps becoming quite useful, as we can use both raw and cooked versions of these to quickly adjust our sanities when needed beyond some of the very same lures as before, but you know, green and dust specific. Blue caps continue the trend as well, only I'd really stick to munching them raw alone for that 20 health a pop, which is very respectable. And finally, moon shrooms and their sleep mechanics. Stat-wise, they are nothing to write home about, however their unique abilities to render us asleep while also combating grogginess are very noteworthy. Raw versions do the former, with cooked variants being the stuff that can really get us back in action fast. Plus, just like how all three versions of fungal turf can be made at a terra firma tamper using some of the upcoming mushroom spores, moon shrooms also go into crafting their own turf too. The very same mutated fungal turf seen in Lunar Grotto Mind. But no, no, no. Nothing beats mushy cake, everybody. Created via smashing every single mushroom variant there is, each bite makes us fully immune to sleep for an entire day. Not even Bear Jersey Yawn can give us a snooze. 
It's good stuff. And yet, so we're still not even into the cool stuff yet. So not when Toadstool still lives, that is. We aren't exactly here to discuss how to kill the guy, but his death still concerns us as he'll drop one to two mushroom caps of every type, two to three mushroom spores of each type, blueprints for fun caps there, and doubly so if it was Misery Mind, and another potential blueprint for glow caps that will also be very important in a minute here. So, to stick with the fun, let us mention how fun caps slow our hunger drains by 25%, give us a wee bit of summer and wetness insulation, spoil over time themselves, while spoiling any perishables within our inventories 50% faster, and can even produce a corresponding mushroom spore every minute or so while atop our noggins. And here's where our next bit of fun begins, everyone. Mushroom spores. All mush tree types release them come their respective seasons. Red for summer, green for spring, and blue for winter, in case you're wondering. And we ourselves can and should catch them with a bug net or two. And why, you ask? Well, they sort of go hand in hand with those very glow caps I mentioned for a colored light, can be inserted into the enlightened crown and however many enlightened shards we happen to have for even more colored light and stuff. And lastly, help turn our upcoming mushroom planters into super efficient shroom producers. For you see, spores net us five mushrooms per harvest over the original three. It's good stuff. And that's the thing we end with today, actually. Crafted at an alchemy for eight rot, five manure, and two living logs, mushroom planters accept a single mushroom of any type, and after just under four days, will produce four mushrooms per harvest for up to four harvest each planter. Just not in winter mind. Not unless you mushroom plant in the caves, that is. But yes, be sure to keep some of those living logs handy, as you'll also need some additional ones to quote-unquote refuel your planters now and then. But enjoy it all, as there you have everyone. All things mushrooms, updated and revisited for Don't Start Together here, and I gotta say, I hope it was all fun, guys, but I think the fun guy speaks for itself, so hold them I and get to it. Thanks for watching, folks. Well, wishes to all, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.